Hey, this is Gary Seegers. And this is Chris Giannini. And this is the Winning Cures Everything podcast. Let's talk about the SEC's ministry. Right? Uh, let's go on and break these teams down, all right? So let's start off with Florida. Now, I've got Florida losing to Michigan, and that's a neutral site game. I've got them losing at home to LSU, and I've got them losing at home to Florida State. I've got them at 7-1 and one in the SEC East, and they beat everybody else. They beat A&M at home. They beat Georgia in Jacksonville. Uh, they beat South Carolina. They beat Tennessee. Um, I, you know, I, I think Florida's going to be really good this year. I think their quarterback play is going to be way, way up. What, well, do you, what do you have on the game? All right, you can use the word improved. I don't know if it's going to be up. It's going to be improved because it was putrid last year. <laughs> okay. They made LSU's quarterback look pretty decent. Yeah. And, and we had the worst quarterback play in the SEC. I mean, obviously, y'all only scored 10 points against them, but, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I mean, pretty awful. So, they, they're, they're not good at quarterback. They're not good at all on the offensive side of the ball. They haven't been since McIlwain got there. They, they've got Felipe Franks this year at quarterback. You think banging a shark is going to make them better? <sighs> I mean, who knows? I got them losing to Missouri. I'm not Florida? Missouri. No, sorry. Michigan. Michigan. I, I can't read my, my own thing now. <laughs> I got them losing to LSU. We both agree on that. I got them losing the cocktail party. Really? Yeah. Okay. And I got them losing to South Carolina. I got them losing the, to Florida State. Okay. So you've got them, what, 7-5? and five? I've got them 7-5. and five. I think they have a drastic fall off. And even if they don't lose all of those games, I think they're going to lose some of those games. Okay. They will finish 8-4, and 7-5. and five. Okay. I don't see them being that great. They haven't impressed me. If they McElwain's if they go three years there, he hasn't done anything if, that scares me. If they go seven and five, does McElwain start to feel a little heat? No, he's made it to two straight two, SEC two championship straight games. SEC championship games. He's done decent in bowl games. Like they got smoked in the first bowl game, forty one to seven by yes. Michigan, but they they smoked Iowa last now, year. Say they killed Iowa. So I think I think he's okay. I don't know. You have me. After three years, no, no, like eight, eight and four, eight and four. The only team then, he's lost to is Alabama for the last two years. Realistically, well, I mean, you know, on the grand scheme, he did lose to Tennessee last year. First time they've lost Tennessee in what eleven years yes. at that point. So that's my that's my thought on Florida. All I right. think they are substantially down. Georgia. I have it 10 and 2. That's insane. To me. I've got them winning all of their non-conference games. I got them beating Tennessee. I've got them losing to Florida and I've got them losing at Auburn. I think they will be 7 and 0 when they go to the cocktail party on Halloween weekend. And then I think they fall off a little bit and I think Florida goes to the SEC Championship game because Florida will go they 7 win, and 1 in they conference. Win the cocktail party. And Georgia will go 6 and 2 but win everything else. And that that non-conference schedule where Florida had to play Michigan and Florida State instead of Georgia Tech and Appalachian State and Notre Dame, mm-hmm. I think gets Georgia to a New Year's Six Bowl. Well, all right, so we disagree strongly here. I, I, it's not so much so, belief in Kirby Smart. It, like, I, I do believe that, that things will bounce back their way because they had a lot of really close losses last year that I think will flip the other direction. And see, Because they've got more experience this year. They've got both of those senior running backs back. I think Easton's going to be way better. Like, I... I firmly believe that Georgia will be a because they've got more talent than anybody else. You know they do have the best quarterback, but I think they are way inept at co- uh, coach. Here's my problem: Appalachian State's way better than we give them respect, and we give them a lot of respect. Yeah. Okay. I think Notre Dame is an absolute joke, but they're Brian Kelly's fighting for his job. Mississippi State, Tennessee, those. First four games and at Vanderbilt in, in five weeks. I'm not really worried about Vanderbilt. Those first four games in five weeks. Remember, they lost Vanderbilt last. They year. will. They will lose one of those games. So okay. I, there's no possible way they are going seven and zero out of those first seven games. It's just not going to happen. Then they get a bye week, and I think things get tough. They get the cocktail party. They get South Carolina. I think South Carolina is going to be way better this year. And they get Auburn. They get Kentucky. They get Georgia Tech. I think they're, a, think they're way better than Georgia Tech. That is a back-loaded schedule. That is it? a gauntlet to run. Kirby Smart will make mistakes. I think Eaton will make mistakes. Yeah. 
and I think they're going to cost them games. Now, they're not going to have a terrible season. I think eight and four. I think eight and four is a good season for a second-year head coach and a sophomore quarterback. Okay. Got a lot of talent. I'm not saying they're going to be garbage, but there's no way that team's finishing ten and two. I think I think they're really good. I don't know who they're going to lose to in those first seven games, but I'm going to tell you, I've never seen Georgia start off seven and zero, oh, and I don't think this is the best Georgia team I've seen in a long time. They're just not going to do it. They're going to lose one of those games. Okay, okay. Now, I I think differently, but we will see. All right, Kentucky, the most uh, experienced team coming back in the SEC. I got them going six and six. I got them losing at South Carolina. I got them losing to Florida. Uh, I've got them losing at Mississippi State. Got them losing to Tennessee. You got, got them beating anybody of note. I've got them beating Ole Miss, if you want to count that. I got them losing at Georgia and losing to Louisville. That's a tough schedule for them at the end of the year. You know, at Georgia and then Louisville, like that's that's tough. If they're fighting for a bowl game or something like that, if they don't get the sixth win with Vanderbilt, they're in trouble. So when we did this, I literally just went down the sheet picked the games I thought they were going to win, lose, wrote a number down beside it, didn't think about it after that. Went back, reevaluated, I had them eight, uh, four and eight. Nice. There's no way they're going to be four and eight. I think that you're right. I think your number six and six. I had them losing to Tennessee. They probably beat Tennessee. There are two teams on this schedule that they play that I have them losing to that they'll probably beat. We've got them losing to South Carolina, Florida, Mississippi State, Tennessee, Ole Miss, Vanderbilt, Georgia, you got them losing Louisville. to Vanderbilt. Got them losing to Vanderbilt. Well, because I guess that, that game is in Nashville. Yeah. And it's they right will, in between Ole Miss and Georgia. Yeah, they'll win two of those games somewhere. And I don't okay. know where, but it's just going to – it's just always the way it works out. Stoops is too good of a coach. And yeah. they And you you brought it up earlier. They have way too much coming back for them to be yeah. a 4-18. A lot of experience. I, I was just chalking up who do I like in this game. It's really, really early. We're, yeah. you know, recording Obviously, this July this will 2nd. This is this is gonna change, but eight four and eight is not the schedule. That's not what they're gonna finish at. They're a better team than that. I'm with you. Missouri is up next. I've got Missouri at five and seven. I've I've got them at one and seven in the SEC. I think they go four and zero oh in non conference. Their only tough non conference game is Purdue. Uh, they play Missouri State, Purdue uh, at UConn, which I, we already talked about that. And what is the third? Oh, Idaho. They play Idaho. I think they go 4-0 against that slate. I don't think they beat anybody. They've got South Carolina at home. They've got Auburn at home. They've got Florida at home. They've got Tennessee at home. And then they play at Arkansas, at Vanderbilt. I think they beat Vanderbilt. That's the only one. Like, all their their toughest games are really at home. And then they've got to go on the road, like, at Georgia, at Kentucky, uh, at Vanderbilt, at Arkansas. I think you're right. I got them 4-8. But I've got them... Losing to Vanderbilt, they could easily win that game. I mean, you're talking about what will probably be a fight for the bottom of the SEC yeah. East. So that goes one way or the other. They'll either be four or eight, five and seven. They'll win those non-conference games. I think. I just don't respect them very well. All right, now South Carolina is next. It, tell me what you think because you you surprised me. I'm I'm big on South Carolina. This is my SEC East winner. I I really love Muschamp. I love the quarterback coming back. Never seen Muschamp with a good quarterback. Um, Jake Bentley is is for real. He is no, he's, he's, he's the real deal. He, yeah, he really is. I think they beat NC State. I do think that's a great game to start the season off with. Yeah. I think I think defensively they will be able to contain them. I think they beat them. I think they handle Missouri pretty easily. I think they beat Kentucky. I, I do think that game's going to be closer than expected. They got Louisiana Tech. I have them in this thing of what we're doing, losing to A and M but beating Arkansas. I think there's a chance, and then they play Tennessee. I have them losing two of those three games, but but they could easily win all three. I don't see them losing all three. They could go two and one instead of one and two. Okay. So in that stretch, but I just know they're going to lose games somewhere. Got them beating Vanderbilt. Got them beating Georgia. That's a big game. That's in Athens. That'll be the only time where I think he's not the best quarterback on the field, but they find a way to win. I got him beating Florida. Okay. That's a huge win. That's a huge upset. But it's it's in South Carolina, then Warford, and then I probably have him losing to Clemson. Man, there is a chance I think I could see them beating Clemson. Now, that don't mean I think they're going to go 10-2. It all depends on I think they'll, quarterback play. If something crazy happens, I've just watched football for too long. 
if they lose one of those early games, it doesn't scare me off from the fact that they might pull an upset up against Clemson. I'm with you. I've got I've got South Carolina starting off four zero, and then losing at Texas A&M. I've got them beating Arkansas at home in Columbia, and then losing at Tennessee. Now the reason is so we have that the same. Yeah, we we've got that the same. Um, the reason being that Tennessee has a bye week before the South Carolina game. It's in Knoxville, and I think that those guys will be fired up. Now a lot could change here because, and we'll talk about that next, but. Uh, I think Tennessee comes out and beats these guys because of what happened last year. Well, it's either like going to be one way or the other, and we'll, we'll get into that. South Carolina basically kept Tennessee out of the SEC championship game last year. Like, that was that was their doing. It was in Columbia last year. It's in Knoxville this year. I think they'll be fired up. Uh, I've got them beating Vanderbilt. I've got them losing at Georgia, losing to Florida, and then losing to Clemson. So I've got South Carolina at 7-5. and five. I think Florida and Georgia just have more talent than them right now. Like, I, the talent had dropped off so far under Spurrier that I think they're just not quite there yet. And I think they're going to put a lot of their eggs in the Georgia basket. And when they lose that game, I don't know that It'll they'll have deflating. much left. Yeah, I don't, I don't think they'll have a lot left after that. I can see that. So we're really close. Let's, You've got them at 9-3. and three. Let's say they beat Tennessee. You think they lose to Tennessee. Let's say they beat Tennessee. Flips, I mean, and I've got them winning Tennessee. Let's say they lose that. We, I've got them nine and three. You got them seven and five. They'll probably finish around eight and four, and we're we're pretty close. We're right to about there. the same. And then it all depends on on what happens with everybody else if they can end up winning the conference. That's right. You know, or winning the division anyway. The, yeah, the division. Tennessee, I've got eight and four. I think Butch Jones's job depends on the Georgia Tech game. If they beat Georgia Tech, they can start out three and two, and he will be fine because I've got them losing at Florida, and I've got them losing to Georgia. I've got them beating Georgia Tech. Um, I got them beating South Carolina. Then I got them losing to Alabama. And I think after that, like, they lose to LSU, but that's it. You know, they at Kentucky, I think they'll win based on talent. I think they beat Southern Miss. I think they win at Missouri. I think they beat Vanderbilt because Vanderbilt will be payback. Here's, here's my problem with this. Is This is what we were talking about earlier. Butch Jones is coaching for his job. We've talked about that with a couple of different people. Butch Jones is going to be coaching for his job this year. I think if he goes eight and four, I think he keeps it. You're right. Eight and four saves him. Six and six loses it. Seven and five. It's a crapshoot. It's it's iffy. It's okay? a crapshoot, and, and it really depends on whether or not he goes seven and five by losing a lot of games early, because by that bye week, if he is two and three, they could go on and pull the plug if they think they got a shot at Chip Kelly or one of these other big guys. So that's where I think South Carolina in that game after their bye week has an advantage. There's a chance that he's going to be coaching for his job for that South Carolina game. And if he loses South Carolina, he gets fired. That added pressure, look, Butch usually don't do well under pressure. That's true. We've seen that. Also, there's another scenario where if he slips up and loses to Georgia Tech, loses to Florida, and loses to Georgia, and he starts off two and three, he might be fired at the bye week so they can just go ahead and make a clean slate. They've got the bye week to figure something out. I don't see an interim coach coming in that's on that staff that's strong enough to lead them to a whole lot of wins at all anyway. Okay, I can understand So that. I, I could see a scenario where they're either without Butch Jones going into that South Carolina game that's going to be crucial, or he's coaching for his job and he just craps all over himself trying to be desperate. I'm with you. Does weird Butch Jones stuff. I'm, I'm with you. That if you, him if you had him beating Vanderbilt – yeah, I've got them beating Vanderbilt. Okay, but and I ended up doing this thing. They ended up eight and four. Kentucky ended up four and eight. I believe they'll both finish six and six. Do you think Butch is out of here? I think Butch is out of here. I I thought as soon as the season ended last year, Butch Jones should have been fired and would not survive this season. There's no way on earth I can create a win loss schedule that's going to have him surviving this year. Okay. Because I don't think he should have survived last year. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right, Vanderbilt. Last one for uh, for this little break here. Uh, Vanderbilt, I don't have a lot of faith in them at all. They won a lot of – like a lot of the games that they won that got them to a bowl game last year were super tight against teams at the perfect time. They beat a lame duck Tennessee team at the end of the season that you and I could have put together 40 people. They beat a lame duck know. Ole Miss team that Same was just thing. coming off of Chad Kelly getting hurt. Yep. Uh, exact same thing. I, yeah, I think they, you know, they beat Georgia and they beat them seventeen to sixteen when Georgia made some of the most 
unbelievable mistakes that you will ever see in a football game. Yeah. You know, I think so is going to make a lot of those again. I, this year. I think they, I think their quarterback was super young last year. And here's the difference: is Vanderbilt loses at Cunningham, and nobody really thinks about that. But I'm telling you, that guy was their team. He was the heart of that football team. And I don't think I've, I've got them going three and nine. Like I've got them losing to Kansas State in the non-conference and beating the other three, uh, Middle Tennessee, Alabama A&M, and Western Kentucky, and then losing to everybody else. I don't think they've got the talent to be able to keep up, and I'm glad that Derek Mason got that contract money when he did because, you know, without that guy on defense, like I don't see anybody on that defense that will step up and do what Cunningham did. I got him at five and seven, probably more realistically four and eight. I mean, we're not not too far off from there. I mean, they they could beat Missouri at home. They could beat Kentucky at home. And I mean, if Tennessee's no lame duck, I mean, if they fired their coach or if Butch is, you know, all but fired and he's just walking dead going into that game, it's they possible. could lose that game again. You know, I mean, it's in Knoxville this year, so it may be a little more difficult. But I don't know. I don't know that it matters. I don't know that it if, matters. If Butch Jones is still on the sidelines and everybody's ready for him to be fired and he's got four or five wins going into that game, they're going to lose that game. The crowd will not be on the side of Tennessee. I'm with you. I'm with you. All right. This is Gary Seegers, your co-host and owner of Winning Cures Everything, the best sports blog and podcast in the South. There are a ton of ways that you can connect with us. First, check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Second, give us a like on Facebook, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything. Third, follow us on Twitter, at winningcures, or myself, at ProSevereGary, or at ChrisBGiannini. Four, Email the show, winningcureseverything at gmail.com. Fifth, download, subscribe to, and review the podcast. You can find us on iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play, and all of your favorite podcast apps. We'll have new shows up every Tuesday and Friday morning along with different articles throughout the week. Remember, winningcureseverything.com.